Hi there, welcome to Jazz Process video number 14. I'm Jeff Antoniak. Thank you for tuning into these. If this is the first video you're looking at, welcome. Uh, hope you'll check out some of the previous videos. It'll give you a little bit of context about what's going on. But really what's going on is for the last two months, I've been getting ready for a big Baltimore Symphony series of gigs I have. They're coming up next week. So I've been thinking a lot about, I'm sort of relearning how to play some instruments like this alto and baritone saxophone. Uh, it, it's just been a lot of music to prepare. So I've been, you know, sort of working through this myself and I thought it might be interesting to share the process with how I do this. This isn't the only way to do things. This is how I do it. I love the comments. I love hearing uh, what works for you, what doesn't work for you, how you may do this process differently. Uh, I think musicians don't, you know, we give each other lessons, we go to school, but uh, as far as like really sharing what our process is, the nitty gritty stuff, that stuff gets put aside, that gets hidden. That's, we, we wait till we practice a couple thousand hours, then we go on Facebook and show off. That is not what I'm doing here. So um, today I'm talking about practicing differently now. And the idea is I've been practicing in a particular way for two months. Um, now, with just a handful, three, four, five days till the world premiere of uh, this uh, piece with the Baltimore Symphony, I'm practicing differently. And so what I mean by that is I'm wanting to get myself paying attention to what I'm hearing. I've been practicing a lot with my not best friend, the tuner. Uh, because with alto and baritone saxophone, I don't really have the muscle memory with my embouchure. So I'm really, uh, you know, been building that back up. And I've got to the point where I'm liking the way I'm voicing things, I'm playing well in tune and all that stuff. But the other night I was practicing and I was just having problems getting in tune, like the extreme registers, things like that. It was driving me nuts. So then I put on a track and played with it and it sounded fine to me. Uh, I went to a gig the next night and played alto all night. It sounded really, really good came back, played with the tuner, and it, I was having problems with it. So what I'm doing is setting the tuner aside and leaving that machine on its own. At this point, it's about playing music. And clearly my ears, I'm hearing these harmonic intervals. I'm hearing a C major seven chord from the piano or a low C from the bass. I'm playing a B natural against it, and I'm seeing where that fits. So that's uh, it, this may seem like an obvious thing to do, and it is an obvious thing to do, but so much of us get wrapped up in our way of practicing that we kind of miss this stuff. So I was talking a little bit, I, I think on the, uh, on the post or the headline or whatever, I'm talking about feedback loops. This is something huge. This idea that for communication to happen, someone has to say something, and now this is kind of weird because I don't get to see you nodding your head or whatever, but when you're talking to somebody, if you talk to them and they don't go, uh-huh, every once in a while, or give you a little uh, body language, you're going to start thinking you're insane because they are not giving you feedback. For communication to happen, you have to put it out there and then you have to get something back. There's this feedback loop. Now, musicians can be pretty bad at this. Uh, this idea of playing something... <laughs> and actually hearing it. Hearing it bounce off the wall and come back to you and now make a decision about what you heard. Again, it sounds so simple. I hear pros constantly not doing this. Out playing the piano. They're, they're playing a gig, you can't hear the piano. They're up there having a great time blowing their head off or whatever. The volume is jacked and they're not hearing that. These are amazing musicians. These are grad students that I've had. This was me in the past. So this idea about hearing your sound. So you may be thinking about volume, dynamics, right? Where are you fitting in the band? I hear so many people get this wrong. I will say the younger you are and the more male you are, the worse you are, <laughs> probably. And by young, I'm talking about late teens, early 20s. There's that energy, right? And Anyway, I've been there, I've been that guy. You know what I'm talking about. It could be pitch, just playing and not hearing what's going on. I, and I, I, I've done all these things, right? Uh, I'm, not, I'm not down on anybody. This is all stuff we all have to worry about. Tone and timbre. And for instance, when I'm playing some of the solo stuff with the symphony versus when I'm playing in the section, I'm gonna have to be modulating my timbre. Am I, you know, am I blending with the bassoon in this instance now Am I really going for it in a solo instance? These are all, all the kind of things I'm thinking about. And so 
I'm, I'm trying to get my ears a little more tuned on. I'm worrying less about the tuner and being perfectly in tune and more about exercising that part. So, uh, and frankly, the best thing I can think to do with this stuff is to, uh, yeah, we all have these play along tracks, right? So I've got, I think, uh, you don't know what love is here, maybe. Um, I haven't actually really played this tune on alto, so I think I sort of know the changes. But the idea is I'm just gonna be playing very slowly and just trying to hear my tone. I'm gonna be trying to match my volume, which may be weird on the video. Um, you may not get as good a sense as I'm getting here in the room, but just playing really slowly. I'm not thinking technique. I'm not even thinking right notes or wrong notes. I'm thinking, I'm trying to hear my sound relative to what's going on and make decisions. And so I'm exercising a way different part of my brain than let me learn these notes. I've been doing that for two months. Or, oh my God, what am I doing with the back of the throat? So now I'm setting that stuff aside on autopilot. I'm trusting my subconscious is going to take care of that. And... Um, this is an important part of the process. I think you do it in whatever your regular job is, whether you're a full-time musician or a cop or a teacher. You prepare, 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 and then stop and put it out there and let it go. And then pay attention to the feedback loops. Let me just play a little minute here. Three, four. couple things and I, I played an interval on the horn an A to an E I think I played it a couple times the notes didn't even work with the changes but I was trying to do something a little bit differently place the note a little bit differently so I guess for me I tend to intellectualize things I tend to calculate things that's my brain that's the way I'm wired that's the way I practice I'm looking at a tuner so now for me I need to put that aside I am practicing differently now so if you tend to be someone like to you this is like yeah what's he talking about I do this all the time Okay, so maybe you need to be doing the other approach, right? So this is the kind of stuff I talk about in jazz band masterclass and definitely in jazz teacher training when I'm training other teachers to work with people. This is a big deal. We're all wired one way or the other. And for me, this is an important shift I need to make in my practicing. It's, it's actually not very comfortable. I feel like I'm not getting stuff done because I'm not, you know, practicing the written notes or working with the metronome or whatever. But uh, I've learned to you know, sort of force myself into this place. Sounds silly to say, I'm just kind of playing and listening, but uh, it's, it's different for me. So anyway, that's, that's kind of how I'm spending the next three or four days. I'm not obsessing over the notes or getting this thing exactly at the right tempo. I'm trusting that's gonna come and I'm just sort of creating a space for that. So uh, hope this is interesting. Hope that rings a bell for you. I'd love to know your thoughts on this. Um, please go to the YouTube channel. It's Jeff Antoniak Educator. Uh, on YouTube and you can find all the videos. And as I said, the uh, Baltimore Symphony performances are coming up this week. So I'm gonna do my best to somehow uh, record some of the rehearsals without like getting kicked out or my phone taken away from me. Uh, same with the performances. So I'll do my best to get that up for you guys. I really appreciate you tuning in. Hope you're enjoying the Jazz Process videos and uh, please comment, let me know, let me know your thoughts. All right, see ya.